Hi, this is an overview presentation on SIP trunking and how it can help save you money. In some cases, enough to pay for your new phone system. My name is Rolf Sluice. I'm an engineer with AdCap Network Systems. We're here in the southeast United States. Uh, you can find out more about us at our website at adcapnet.com. We've done a lot of SIP trunk installs uh, since 2006. Uh, we're a mid-sized Cisco reseller, so we've got a lot of good experience with Cisco IP telephony systems. And we've been able to save, help save our customers a lot of money by converting them from traditional PBXs to IP phone systems and in the process moving from a combination of network and voice circuits at every site to just network with SIP voice delivered over them. So let me explain a little bit about what SIP trunking is. And SIP's a replacement for the voice T1 and most of the voice analog lines that go into a traditional business telephone system or a PBX. If you've got uh, maybe uh, a few different sites each of them is probably going to have their own PBX. You're probably going to have a, a service contract with someone there locally where you take care of it yourself and you'll have individual T1 lines that go into that location. So SIP is a way of taking voice from outside your organization and having service providers deliver it um, over the IP data network to an IP phone system that can handle it. And it, instead of getting terminated with a voice gateway that you plug a voice T1 into, you put a session border controller in place. And I'll explain what that is in a little bit. Uh, SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol, which doesn't really tell you much more than what SIP does, so I'll continue to use SIP. Uh, it's the current standard for the delivery of IP voice. And it's a flexible standard, which means it can be implemented in a few different ways. And you have to, when you're doing the uh, implementation and cutover of the phone system from a traditional uh, T1 to SIP, your service provider and your installer has to be cognizant of the different ways that it can be um, implemented. And it's a replacement for the H323 uh, video and voice standard and it works with faxes. It works with faxes either with the T38 uh, IP fax protocol or fax in band which is just noise uh, carried through just like voice would be carried through over the IP phone system. So what are some benefits of SIP trunking? Well first of all, uh, consolidate all the T1s that you have into a single SIP trunk. So for example, say you got 10 different sites, each of them has uh, one PRI, a voice T1. Each of those is going to have 23 channels, uh, so you're paying for 230 voice channels whether you need them or not. If you convert over to uh, a large uh, phone system that connects all your sites together and you do SIP trunking, you can pay just for the channels that you need, not for what you need at peak periods of voice calling. Reliability. So voice T1s are very reliable. It's copper that comes into your location and for most of the time it's up and running. That's a good thing about it. SIP achieves reliability in a different way. Uh, SIP trunks can be sent to IP addresses and you can send to multiple IP addresses. So just like um, the Information Technology Department is working on disaster recovery by virtualizing servers and then uh, having storage copy replications uh, of those servers to another site so they can bring them up virtually. So you essentially have a disaster recovery site. You can do the same thing with SIP trunking. So you can have all your voice primarily uh, accessed at one site and send all the, uh, all the voice traffic there over the network. If for whatever reason that site's not reachable because of a power outage or a natural disaster or something like that, all the SIP trunk can go to the other site. So it gives you a much higher level of reachability for your customers. Uh, conversions, yes, we combine voice and data circuits, and that's how we can save a lot of money. So, say, again, if you have 10 remote sites, each of them may have a network uh, T1 that you're paying five to seven hundred bucks a month on, and also a voice T1 that you're paying five to seven hundred bucks a month on. You can either consolidate that into one or two data T1s, and then deliver all the voice traffic over those data T1s. There's some caveats in how we do that, because we've got to optimize the voice traffic, but they're well known on how to do that, and well tested out. And then another great thing is uh, reachability. So if you have smaller sites that don't have T1s, many of those won't have uh, direct in dial capability. So if somebody's calling those smaller sites, they'll have to call a main number, and then work through the phone system, auto attendant, or talk to a receptionist to get to somebody. With SIP trunking, you just reach the person that you want. So, voice over IP phone system, I mentioned that a couple times. Uh, it's a replacement for a traditional PBX, and it, um, it works great, first of all. Uh, it can unify your entire organization into one phone system where you can do four or five digit dialing between any user anywhere, and you can even extend phones uh, to people working out of the house pretty easy. Uh, it needs four main things. It needs a good solid network, good solid local area network, wide area network, um, wireless, 
and uh, remote VPN if you're going to extend it in the house. What I mean by a good network, it's got to have voice and video quality of service. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, it's got to have power over Ethernet to power the devices, the phones or the video phones. It's got to have good network security. got to have excellent performance. It has to be remotely manageable. So it has to be a decent network. On top of that, you put voice application servers, just like you put other servers on your network, whether they're email or customer relationship management or other types of servers. Um, handsets, because you've got to have something to pick up the phone and call people with. And then you got to have a trunk to the public service telephone network. Now, with a voice over IP phone system, for many years, that trunk has been a voice gateway where we plug voice T1s from the service providers into and that converts it to IP tra traffic internally. With zip trunking, we replace that voice gateway with a session border controller. So uh, the session border controller becomes the connection to the service provider. Now we can do those at individual sites or we can do those centralized. There's a couple different deployment models. Um, and we can also connect to the service provider over the wide area network or over the internet or through a dedicated circuit coming into uh, where your servers are. So there's a lot of flexibility. Now quality of service is very important because since voice is coming in over the data traffic, we have to architect and set up the, the different parts of the network so that uh, the network recognizes the voice traffic and prioritizes it over other types of traffic. There's a lot of details to that, um, but the upside of it is when you're sending stuff out of your network, you've got to be responsible for prioritizing the voice and for the voice traffic that comes in over the SIP trunk, your service provider has to prioritize the voice over other traffic, and so you've got to have that discussion with them. So I mentioned a session border controller a couple times. Uh, as you can see here, the session border controller that we use is a Cisco router that has some special software loads in it to be able to handle voice. Um, it can do lots of things. So it can convert from SIP to H323 to traditional voice T1s. Uh, it can convert uh, DTMF tones, those little touchpad tones, uh, different types of voice codecs, fax and modem, and make sure that's all handled properly. Um, it can do port translation so that your internal IP addressing scheme doesn't have to be known to your SIP service provider and yet everything continues to work. It can certainly provide security um, and it also provides quality of service. In fact, <coughs> many cases, since this is a Cisco router, for each of your remote sites, you can use your voice router and your session border controller. It's the same box. So you bring your T1 into the router, it's your session border controller, it's your voice gateway, it does everything for you. So, I said there's a couple ways of deploying SIP trunks. One of them is a centralized SIP trunk. So, this is good when you have a, a good wide area network already in place. Your wide area network service provider might not offer, offer SIP in all the locations where you're at. And you can just bring in a SIP trunk from the service provider into where your IP telephony servers are. So, we put a session, uh, session border controller here. And this terminates the the call and then it sends it out to the individual handsets at whatever site. And I draw in the uh, individual voice gateways here and these are actually backup phone systems so that if for whatever reason we lose T1 connectivity to site, we'll still be able to call internally and make calls in and out if we have some analog lines um, as backup. Uh, it's also good for dealing with 911 if we decide to use 911 out local analog lines. So there's a, another good reason for this. If you have offices in many locations, uh, you might need to get uh, service from a few different SIP trunk providers because they have to have the ability to deliver voice locally for getting whatever those uh, local numbers are. It's usually not that big a deal, but that's just a good reason for a centralized SIP trunk. The student SIP trunk model is where you've got a good setup where your wide area network provider is able to provide the wide area network as well as the SIP trunk and that way the calls are just sent to each individual site. You end up having a session border controller at every site, and it's not very expensive to convert those Cisco routers that you're going to have it anyway uh, to add SIP trunk capability. This um, prevents double uh, flow of voice traffic over the, the head end um, wide area network connection, and it also gives you a little bit more uh, reliability uh, for making local calls out of the SIP trunk if you're in a, a backup situation. So SIP's also about saving money. Uh, there's a lot to saving money with SIP. So the big part of it is to consolidate separate voice and data circuits at remote sites um, into a single data circuit with SIP delivered over it, just like those two models that I showed you. And um, so 
the consolidation of that is, is a big deal. And for a long time, I thought that SIP wasn't really important for uh, places that have a single campus or that are in just one calling area. But because of the reliability and because everybody's doing disaster recovery planning and doing multiple data centers, SIP is a, is a great way of doing that. If you've got a 10 meg connection between your primary and secondary data center, you may as well deliver SIP over that data connection. You're already paying for the data connection, and that way you're able to deliver it to both sites. So it ends up saving you money there, too. And when we go through and run the numbers, and I'll show you an example of that soon, in a lot of cases, the monthly payments that, that people are making today, they can be lowered significantly by converting to SIP trunking. They can be lowered so much that all the new network, the new phone system, and all the installation and deployment services can be paid for if that is financed. So I'll give you an example on that. And so, this, so I'm going to show the calculation on the next page. What we do is we put all the telecom costs on the left column, uh, all your existing telecom costs, all your circuit costs, all your uh, service agreement costs and things like that, um, and see what it would cost you to just keep doing what you're doing. And then on the right side, we'll put what the finance cost of the new equipment and then all the new circuits uh, and everything else would cost. And this is from an actual customer that we did. Uh, they're in the insurance industry and they have 800 users. I think they had about 50 remote sites. And we went, I know this is kind of an eye chart, uh, but you get the general idea. And it's not hard to add up all these different costs. So we, up here we just say, well, what, what their PBX lease costs are. Right now they're nothing because they own them. But they still got service contracts and, and monthly service on, all, on them. They've got internet at every site. Uh, they had a small wide area network. They had six voice T1s, a whole bunch of analog lines. The analog lines end up being fairly expensive. We break out long distance to intra-company and inter-company because long distance between different offices of the company, once we have a wide area network that voice is going over, that long distance cost goes away. It still costs you money to call um, outside the company to long distance. And sometimes we, we capture conference calling expenses too because a lot of case, cases uh, we can put an internal conferencing system in and save money. And sometimes project office, so that's setting up temporary offices that we might need. So their total monthly costs were about $92,000 once we captured all this stuff. Over a five-year period, that was $5.5 million. Now what we did was one of our engineers came up with a whole new design, and we costed out everything, and we worked it out to a lease payment for all the equipment installation. That was $23,000. Then we worked through what the wide area network upgrades and SIP trunks would cost, and it came out to a total monthly cost of $55,000. So a total monthly cost reduction from $92,000 to $55,000 a month. Now the cool thing is, it's a profitable business, so um, they pay taxes, so they can depreciate a lot of that new equipment too. So the total five-year cost changed from $5.5 million down to $3.1 million, saving more, more than $2 million by getting a brand new phone system and network upgrade because they're switching to SIP trunking. That's a pretty good deal. So takeaways on SIP trunking. It's technology that works and can save you money. Um, and it can partially pay for the, the phone system. We've been doing this since 2006. We've done this for a bunch of different businesses and a bunch of different business um, uh, industries. We've done nationwide deployments on this. It works. We've worked with probably 20 different service providers. Everybody's a little bit different, but everybody has a, a system that works. Having said that, turn up a test trunk first. Test everything. Test a two-hour conference call because sometimes there's timeouts after 30 minutes or an hour. You want to get those out of the way. Pick up the phone and call Euro Disney and work through their touchpad. Do a bunch of different tests. Test fax every single way. Test hang-ups. Just have, know what it is that you're testing. And what I really recommend is you work with a local value-added reseller that has experience in SIP trunk deployment and planning. Don't just work with a service provider and with someone that's never done this before. Now, i got some frequently asked questions. So, 911, E911. Yeah, we can handle that a bunch of different ways. We can do static location and send it to the service providers. I'll send it to the public safety access uh, point. We can do E911 service or, or local analog lines even. SIP can be used with an existing PBX. Uh, it doesn't save as much money and it, it requires a lot of programming on a PBX, but you can use it. SIP does work through a firewall. You've got to have a SIP aware firewall because that's where some of the timeouts can come from. Um, if you've got an IP PBX right now, voice over IP system, how do you get started? Turn up a SIP trunk. Turn up a test SIP trunk. Bring it in. Um, you want to make sure you have quality of service on it or you bring it in on a dedicated line because you want to be a good uh, test, but bring it in and, and set up some test calls in and out on it. And do I have an example of SIP trunk configuration? So yes, I took a Cisco router SIP configuration, cleaned it up a little bit, 
uh, and publish the entire configuration on tech tips at agcapnet.com. And you're welcome to go take a look at that. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.